Today, I'm talking about The Outsiders, written by S.E. Hinton in 1967, and the two versions of the 1983 movie adaptation by Francis Ford Coppola, with an all-star cast including Patrick Swayze, Matt Dillon, Rob Lowe, Emilio Estevez, and Tom Cruise. Hey there, I'm Jessica, and this is Bookshelf to Big Screen. If you're new to the channel, I take a look at books that have been adapted to the big or small screen and tell you what changed. So if you only watch the movie and don't want to look like a fool at book club, be sure to subscribe. The story follows 14-year-old pony boy Curtis as he deals with life as a greaser, a kid from the wrong side of the tracks. His parents died in a car accident and he lives with his older brothers, Derry and Soda Pop. His group of friends, including 2-Bit, Dally, Steve, and Johnny, are his surrogate family, and through his story, we understand that regardless of our circumstances, most people are dealing with the same emotional challenges. Real quick, if you want to avoid any spoilers, sections with spoilers are marked in the description below, so you can just skip past them and watch the spoiler-free bits. This is a pretty unique adaptation because Francis Ford Coppola did two cuts of this movie. The theatrical version is missing a few key elements from the novel, and it really changes, in my opinion, the essence of the story, even though the main bits are still there. In the prologue to the second cut, Coppola explains that he received a letter from a librarian saying that her students loved this book, and they thought he should be the one to direct the film adaptation. Coppola decided that he would do it, but when it came time to releasing the film, the producers pushed for cuts to shorten the film and highlight the scenes with action. He gave them the cut that they wanted in order to move on to filming Rumblefish, another S.E. Hinton adaptation. He says later, when he showed the movie to his granddaughter's 8th grade class, they asked about the missing scenes from the novel, and because he was so impressed with their knowledge of the book, he went and created the new cut for them and called it The Outsiders, the complete novel. I'm going to primarily be talking about the second version of the movie because it's a nearly perfect adaptation and I'll point out the places where the theatrical version was lacking. So let's get into it. The complete novel begins with Ponyboy writing the story he's telling. He's walking home after watching a movie and he gets jumped by some of the Soches. One of the Soches pulls a blade and cuts him under the chin, but his friends show up just in time and run the Soches off. We get a quick introduction to all the characters and a glimpse of how protective Derry is of Ponyboy. The theatrical cut is missing this scene entirely. In the book, it happens just like this, but the bit about Ponyboy writing about it comes at the end and we'll talk more about that later. What's really missing here is that Ponyboy gives an in-depth background on each character, which I feel is so important to understanding these boys, but it's all in his inner monologue, so it's not something that easily translates onto film. In the movie, Dally, Ponyboy, and Johnny go to the drive-in, where they meet Cherry Valance and her friend Marsha. This is where the theatrical cut starts. Dally starts teasing Cherry and being vulgar to the point that Johnny stands up to him and tells him to stop. Dally leaves and the girls ask Ponyboy and Johnny to sit with them. They talk for a little and then 2-Bit shows up. Cherry and Ponyboy go for popcorn and sodas and Ponyboy tells her about how Johnny got beat up badly by a bunch of socias recently and she tells him that not all socias are the same and they don't all have it easy. After the movie, the boys are walking the girls home and Ponyboy tells Cherry more about his brothers. He says that Derry doesn't care about him and 2-Bit tries to tell him that he's wrong. Cherry's boyfriend drives up with a car full of his friends and Cherry agrees to go with him to prevent them from fighting. In the book, all this happens, but when Ponyboy first starts talking with Cherry, they have some common ground. They both have competed at the rodeo, and I think it's a great insight to the fact that these people from different social backgrounds have a place where that doesn't really matter, and they just appreciate each other's skill and talent. In the movie, Tubit heads home, but Johnny's parents are fighting, and so he and Ponyboy go hang out at the lot instead. They fall asleep, and it's 2 a.m. when Ponyboy finally gets home. Derry and Soda Pop are waiting up for him, and Derry is furious, saying that he couldn't even call the cops because they might throw Ponyboy and Soda Pop into a boy's home. 
After arguing for a bit, Derry pushes Ponyboy a little too hard and Ponyboy runs out of the house. He runs to Johnny, telling him that they're running away and they walk to the park. This scene is the same in both cuts, however, the soundtrack is different, and this is actually one instance where I prefer the theatrical cut to the complete novel version. The second cut has a punchier song as they run away and go into the next scene, but in the original cut, the music was simple and I believe added a little drama, and I think it was a much better fit for the scene. The new soundtrack to this scene just feels a little cheesy to me. I feel like it takes away from the intensity of what's happening and I really wish it hadn't changed. In the book, this is pretty much just how the scene played out. The boys end up at the park and Bob and his friends show up. They jump Johnny and Ponyboy but focus on Ponyboy, holding him underwater in the fountain and nearly drowning him. Johnny takes out his blade and when Ponyboy regains consciousness, Johnny tells him that he killed Bob and that the others ran away. The boys go to see Dally for help. Dally gives them some money and a gun, gives Ponyboy a jacket, and tells them to take a train to another town and hide out in the abandoned church. This is one scene that is essentially the same across the board. When they get to the church, Johnny goes out for a week's worth of groceries as Dally had instructed and they settle in. Johnny also picked up a copy of Gone with the Wind for Ponyboy, remembering that he had talked about it before and Ponyboy reads it to him to pass the time. They also decide to change their appearance, cutting each other's hair, and Ponyboy also begrudgingly bleaches his, too. When I first watched the theatrical cut, I was disappointed by it, not only because it was missing so much from the book, but because it didn't feel like the outsiders that I had read. The aesthetic was not quite right for me, especially in these scenes while they're hiding out. In Coppola's prologue to the complete novel, he talks about how he likes to find a theme for his movies, and for this movie, he latched onto Gone with the Wind. So he brought that aesthetic into the movie with these romantic sunset scenes, and with that understanding, I can appreciate those scenes now, but I wish I had felt it more clearly from the beginning. During this time of waiting, Ponyboy recites the Robert Frost poem, Nothing Golden Can Stay, which Johnny later references. The poem highlights some of the book's main themes, that youth and innocence and good things are fleeting, and how it can be hard to hold on to those things. After a week, Dally comes to see them, telling them that the police questioned him, but he told them that they had fled to Texas. He takes them out to eat and he tells them that Cherry said that she was willing to testify that Bob and his friends were drunk and looking for a fight. This makes Johnny decide to go back and turn himself in, not wanting to make Ponyboy keep running. When they get back to the church, there's a fire and they find out some kids are inside. Against protests from Dally, Ponyboy and Johnny run into the church and start getting the kids out. Dally helps them, but sees that Ponyboy has caught fire and pushes him down to put it out. He goes back in for Johnny, but the roof collapses. When Ponyboy wakes up, he's in an ambulance, and he's told that Dally and Johnny are in the other ambulance. He's reunited with Derry and Soda Pop at the hospital, and they all go home. The only thing that really doesn't come across as powerfully in the movies as it does in the book is Ponyboy's realization of just how much Derry cares about him. In the hospital, he finally has a moment of clarity where he sees that Derry is crying even when he hadn't cried at their parents' funeral, and he finally understands just how much Derry loves him and what Two-Bit and Dally and Soda Pop have all been trying to tell him. Once he's back home, the guys tell Ponyboy that everyone thinks that he, Dally, and Johnny are heroes for saving those kids. Ponyboy also finds out that the authorities are considering putting Soda Pop and Ponyboy into a boy's home. Derry wants to stay home with Ponyboy, but Two-Bit says that he'll stay and keep an eye on Ponyboy. They run into Bob's friends, and Randy says he wants to talk to Ponyboy. He says he read about him in the paper and that he wouldn't have gone into the fire to save those kids, that he didn't expect that from a greaser. Ponyboy says that being a greaser had nothing to do with it, that it comes down to the individual and Randy agrees and apologizes, and they leave on good terms. 
In the book, Ponyboy reads in a newspaper article that Randy and Cherry had spoken to the police and said that Johnny and Ponyboy were only acting in self-defense. And when they talk, Randy tells Ponyboy about what his home life is like and what Bob's home life was like, and they gain more understanding about each other. Randy also says that he won't be going to the upcoming rumble between the Greasers and the Soches. Tubit and Ponyboy go visit Johnny in the hospital. Johnny is in bad shape, and he passes out while they're talking. They run into Johnny's mom, who's mad that he will see them but refuses to see her. Tubit confronts her, and then they go on to see Dally. Dally asks Tubit for his switchblade, saying they have to win the rumble for Johnny. On their way home, Cherry is waiting for them. She tells them that the Socias have agreed to no weapons in the rumble. She asks how Johnny is doing, and Ponyboy asks if she'll go visit him, but she says she can't because she's still mourning Bob. Ponyboy's initial reaction is anger, but then he understands, and they also leave on good terms. Derry tries to get Ponyboy to stay home, but finally agrees to let him come to the rumble. When the rumble starts, Derry goes up against one of his old friends, a former football teammate. Dally shows up. Ponyboy gets sucker punched and the rumble starts. In the book, it's Derry that gets sucker punched. After some intense fighting, the Soshas run off and the Greasers have won. Dally helps Ponyboy up and they leave. In the book, Dally says they're going to see Johnny. They get pulled over, but Dally says Ponyboy fell off his motorcycle and they end up getting a police escort to the hospital. Dally tells Johnny that they beat the Soshas, but Johnny just tells Ponyboy to stay gold, and then he dies. Dally has a hard time processing this loss, and he leaves. Ponyboy goes home and tells them that Johnny died and that Dally couldn't take it. In his grief, Dally robs a grocery store and then calls the guys to tell them. They race to meet him so they can hide him, but they're too late. Dally pulls his unloaded gun knowing the police will shoot him. In the book, it's more evident that this is a suicide for Dally because Ponyboy is remembering that Dally told him that the gun wasn't loaded and he sees a look of triumph on Dally's face when the police shoot him. Ponyboy tells himself that he knew Dally was dead because he wanted to be dead and he always got what he wanted. The movie gives us an incredibly heartbreaking scene, but it's unable to show us Dally's intention. In the complete novel, Ponyboy passes out after Dally dies. Then he faces trial and is found not guilty. At school, his teacher tells him that he's flunking, but if he writes a paper, he'll pass him. Derry and Ponyboy fight about his poor grades, and Soda Pop loses it and runs off. He says he's tired of being in the middle, and they all agree to stop bickering. Ponyboy finds a note from Johnny in the copy of Gone with the Wind that Tubit had bought, saying that it was worth saving those kids. He tells Ponyboy that he understands what that poem meant, and he wants him to tell Dally about it. Finally, Ponyboy starts writing his essay, which is the story of everything that happened. In the theatrical cut, after Dally dies, it cuts right to Ponyboy, finding the letter from Johnny, and then he starts to write his story. But there's no background as to why he's writing about it. In the book, after he passes out, Ponyboy is in and out of consciousness for three days. He got a concussion from getting kicked in the head during the rumble, and paired with the fever and exhaustion that he already had, he was really sick. He's on bed rest for another week and Randy comes to see him. Randy says he's going to have to testify in the trial and that he's going to tell the truth. Randy says that his dad is disappointed and he asks what Ponyboy's parents think. Ponyboy tells him that his parents are dead and he's worried about being put in a group home. Randy tries to tell him that he'll be alright because Johnny was the one who killed Bob, but Ponyboy gets really worked up over this, saying that he was the one with the knife and the one who killed Bob. Derry has to ask Randy to leave, telling him not to talk to Ponyboy about Johnny anymore. 
when Ponyboy finally gets up and around, he's not quite the same. He's clumsier and absent-minded. He has a lack of appetite. His grades are failing. This is when his English teacher gives him the chance to pass. Three socias come up on him one day saying they were Bob's friends, but Ponyboy isn't afraid anymore and he breaks a bottle and scares them away. When Soda Pop runs off, Derry tells Ponyboy that a letter Soda wrote to his girlfriend Sandy came back unopened. Soda had wanted to marry Sandy, but instead she moved to Florida and she had left the same week that Ponyboy and Johnny had run away. So Soda is dealing with his heartbreak in addition to being put in the middle of Derry and Ponyboy's constant fighting. In the end, when Ponyboy finds Johnny's letter and thinks about how it's too late to tell Deli like Johnny wanted, he realizes it's not too late to tell other people and he'll start by telling his English teacher that there was still good in the world. This novel is a classic that is currently still a part of many high school English curricula. I think it endures because these themes haven't changed all that much. It's still important to help kids understand that people are not necessarily their circumstances, that even cliques are made up of individuals, and while we can't choose our circumstances, we can choose our own actions, and that there's usually common ground to be found. The movie is a celebrated classic because it's directed by Coppola, and it stars an incredible cast who all went on to have great acting careers. But honestly, the theatrical cut as an adaptation sucks. It's got the main parts, but somehow completely loses the story. The complete novel version is a much better adaptation, but again, I feel like the romantic and stylized aesthetic didn't fit with the story and who these characters really are. I only get it now after hearing Coppola's explanation that he was going for this Gone with the Wind theme. Ultimately, I recommend reading this book. There's so much insight and wisdom and understanding that you get from Ponyboy's perspective that just is not available in either adaptation. If you're going to watch, make sure it's the complete novel cut. Well, there you have it. That's my recap on The Outsiders, written by S.E. Hinton in 1967 and the two versions of the 1983 movie adaptation by Francis Ford Coppola. I've included links to both the book and movie in the description below so you can check them out for yourselves. If you enjoyed this review, please click like and be sure to click subscribe to see my next video. Thanks for watching.